Okay. In 1945, in February, the first part of February, I went down to which was the old federal building. And that's where the recruiting office was for the Army, for the Navy, the Marines, the Coast Guard. Everything was there. So that day that I went there, Donald Anderson, Chuck Zahn, Merlin Caval, and I all went down to sign up and we took, uh, we were obligated and we took a little physical there by the Navy. And then uh, they said they would notify us uh, for when they, when they wanted us. Anyways, in the first part of April, well, first week I think in April, we were called, all of us were called, four of us were called out to Fort Snelling. And there we had to take our physical. They said, be ready to leave. So when we went out there, that's what the communication said. So Merlin Caval, Donald Anderson, Chuck Zahn, and myself went there. When we were done with our physical and that, which took, took quite a while, they examined your teeth, they examined your feet, they examined everything. And then Chuck Zahn <laughs> went one way, and the three of us went the other way, and Chuck Zahn was sent out to the Navy uh, to the Great Lakes. And we were sent back home, and they said they would notify us when they wanted us. Now, in the May, the first part of May, uh, Chuck Zahn in April, the first part of April, so he's already gone. He's already gone through over half of, uh, of his boot camp at Great Lakes. And we all, three of us, were sent... And we ended up in the same company at Great Lakes. Merle Caval, Donald Anderson, and myself. And then, uh, I think it was the second week of boot camp, we run into Chuck Zahn. And that was his last week. And then he was sent out, and uh, he ended up in, in Okinawa, uh, aboard a ship out there, and he was in the last battle of of the war. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Yes, he was. Chuck's on. And anyways, after boot camp, I was assigned to Great Lakes for about, oh, about eight weeks. And then I was sent out to California on a troop train. I ended up at Stockton, California. And, uh, oh, that was uh, in, in about the first part of December or something like that. And out there, when I went out to Stockton, where we were, oh, it was about a block away and a big fence, but you couldn't get too close to it. And there was uh, several hundred German prisoner of war behind that fence there at Stockton. I was there, oh, about two weeks or a week and a half, whatever. And I was sent to Treasure Island. That's in San Francisco. They call it Treasure Island. And that's where you were shipped out. And I went over to the Hawaiian Islands. And the Hawaiian Islands, when I got over there, it was all oh, just, just right after Christmas. And then uh, what, uh, I was assigned to the USS Helm, DD-388. Never forget the number. The Helm, H-E-L-M. And it was a destroyer. It was a... Uh, Destroyer, it was a converted uh, World War I destroyer, but it was a good destroyer. So anyways, that's where I was, and we went out from the Pacific. We went to this island, that island, different islands, and then we'd always come back for refueling and restoring down at Pearl Harbor. When it, when the first time I went into Pearl Harbor, when I went in there uh, on the troop ship, you could see practically half of the Arizona, which was uh, uh, destroyed December uh, 7th, 1941, was sticking out the water. Mm -hmm. They call it the conning tower. The whole works, oh gosh, there was so much of it out of the water. And you had to go right past it into Pearl Harbor. It was Well, that was in Pearl Harbor. And uh, there was some other ships there. I think it was in California over on this side. I forget the name of them, but they were sticking out of the water then. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and back in there was the Despac, they call it Despac, that's where the destroyers, and all the destroyers uh, that were in at the time, they were all tied together. So, anyways, 
Then in, uh, in June, we started to decommission the destroyer I was on. And uh, we decommissioned, that's that picture hanging up on the wall that was taken to me on that destroyer. As I recall, it was about the first week in July when we finished decommissioning. And so then we were ordered to take all of our gear, put our gear, and we were all taken off and of reassigned. And there were several aboard the ship they signed over, so they went home on on uh, leave for a while, and then they, they stayed in the Navy. But anyways, we were assigned to five, the crew from the helm was assigned to five different YTBs, that's yard tugboats. That's, they're not big. Yeah. They're, they're, they're uh, uh, oh gosh, they're, well, they're a little bit bigger than the tugs you see on the Mississippi River. They were yard tugboats because they were used uh, uh, over there for uh, directing and mooring of the uh, of the bigger ships. You know, they, uh, they it was hard for them to maneuver. So whenever right. they tied up in that these tugboats, these yard tugboats, they were they were the workhorse of the navy, really. So there was five tugboats, and uh, there was five YFs, and every tugboat was towing a YF. And then there was another little small craft, uh, I can't even remember what it was now, but that we started to cross the ocean and uh, <laughs> at the first part of July. Well, being a yard tugboat, but to be quite honest, it was one of the nicest rides in the, in the uh, ocean because you, you had this big flat bottom, so you didn't have a narrow bottom where you would sway and sway and dip and go. And this one here just kind of ride right along like that. Well, poor old grandpa, we're just pulling out of out of uh, Pearl Harbor, and the guy he was assigned to the tugboat. He came from another ship, though. His name was Richie, and he was from New York, and he was a cook. He was a second class cook. So what the heck does he do? He gets seasick when we're not even out of uh, out of Pearl Harbor. So. We had a full commander. He was a full commander, and he was on our tugboat because he was directing all this group going mm. over to the United States. And lo and behold, he says me, because I was on the helm, take my duty eight hours on, eight hours off, and doing other jobs. Everybody was doing about two or three jobs because we didn't have many guys. We only had, had one guy down there watching the engines. If he got seasick, who's going to do it, see? <laughs> but at any rate, so we get uh, towing and moving on, and poor old grandpa, he's assigned to do the cooking on top of it. <laughs> yeah. On top of Can the you other imagine that? I'm assigned to do the cooking, yeah. And But anyways, this uh, the, the chief, he was, he was a guy that had been in the Navy for 20 years, and I talked to him a lot of times, and that's the first time I had met him because he came from another ship. He could do all the stuff. He he was a, he was he was he was a pretty sharp guy, and the commander knew a little bit about cooking, but not too much. He didn't know any more than I did. But, <laughs> but, but anyways, <laughs> we dug it. I I cooked chicken every which way and for every meal. <laughs> uh, whoever did the order, they had more chicken than anything else. So, anyways, I fashioned a line, and one of the guys helped me. We put a hook on the end of it. I don't know what we put on that, and we threw it off the end and let it drag all night long. In the morning, the guy, Dan, come here, look at what we got. And we had a big ocean salmon. Oh, it was huge! It was huge. We had fish, and we loved it. So they they helped me. We cut it up, and I cooked it up. We had we we had fish morning, noon, and night for a couple of days. <laughs> it took fourteen days to travel across the ocean with the yard tugboat from Hawaii. Wow. And where we our destination was up to Portland, Oregon, and so we we went at to Astoria, Oregon, is right at the beginning of the Columbia River. Mm -hmm. And we went all the, up the Columbia River, all the way up to Portland, Oregon, towing those YFs. And then on the left side as we're going up, here are all kinds of these great 
big ships, uh, cargo ships. Mm. They're all Russian. Mm. They were loading trains and lumber and everything else you could see what they were loading. And they had a lot of women on board over the side waving to us when we were going. We waved to them. And we got up to Portland, and then we were supposed to drop them off there. Well, anyways, we had Liberty in Portland that night. So the next day we thought, well, we'll be on a train. We'll be going somewhere. We'll be going home or something because that's that was our uh, destination. Well, so happened they decided to, with that we should take the the tugboats and the YFs down to San Diego. Now that's all the way down the coast if you look at the map. And we went all the way down the coast. We go into San Diego Harbor and we're signaled the light from up on the hill to go back to Long Beach. So we had a circle around go up to Long Beach. Well, that just so happened to be the end of our trail, but we didn't know that yet. So anyways, we get Liberty and I took the train. They had a train then. It's like a train or streetcar, or whatever it was, uh, and it went from Long Beach. It went up to uh, Hollywood, and I wanted uh, wanted to stand in front of the Brown Derby because I always heard about the Brown Derby, and I stood in front. But I never had a picture taken there. Then the next day, uh, we got our orders, or I got my orders, and the others got their orders, and we're on the train, troop train, and we went back. And we went all the way through Las Vegas and Omaha, Nebraska, and that's where we stopped. They had to do something with the train, and then from train up to Fort Snelling. And at Fort Snelling, that's where I was discharged. And that was in the latter part of August 1946. Okay, so you were 19 then? And I was 19. I was 17 when I joined, and I was 18 at boot camp. And then the next year I was 19. I spent my 18th, 19th birthday in there.